You can start this morning. Come down onto your back. And you can start with your knees open. Take your hands behind your head, lift, and then lower your head back down. This is going to give you a little bit of extra space, a little bit of extra stretch at the back side of the neck. And then you can put your palms together, your fingers are pointing to the sky, your arms are stretched up. Lift your shoulder blades off the ground and then lower the arms back down. So the intention is to make a little bit more space between the shoulder blades. You let your arms fall open wide into a T-shaped position. And you can let your knees fall together and separate your feet in a constructive resting pose. And then start by taking a couple deep breaths. You want to really connect with what's going on along the back side of your body. Feeling like everywhere that you could possibly create more space is widening. So the low back, the sacrum on the ground is becoming a little flatter, a little more stretched out, a little more open. Space between your shoulder blades is a little wider. And the cervical spine at the top of the spine, your neck, is nice and open. All together, you can take a couple of deep breaths here. You're breathing in through the nose. You want to feel your belly rise. And on the exhale, through the mouth, release every drop of air. And inhale through your nose. And out through your mouth. One more. You can start to turn your head from side to side. You're rocking the head very slowly. This is serving a couple of purposes. The first is to start waking up the neck, releasing any tension that may have formed in the neck when the night lay slept. And the other purpose is you're giving the back of the skull a little massage. It's a very sensitive place and there are lots of nerve endings, lots of connective tissue that connects with the back of the neck. So very gently massaging that space. And then eventually bring your head back to your center. Coming into a supine turn, keep your arms wide in a T-shaped position. You can step your feet together. Lift your hips like a bridge pose, and the hips move to the right. Lower them down, and your knees fall to the left. So hips to the right, knees to the left. And if your right shoulder blade lifts off the ground, adjust yourself so that the shoulder blades are pulled firmly planted. You can turn your head to the right. Turn a nice turn here. Again, focusing on your breathing. So every inhale, you can imagine you can still the spine grows a little bit longer. You might even physically adjust your body if you lengthen. And on the exhale, allowing or even imagining as your body deepens in this twist. One more breath here. First, bring your head back through center, and then the knees, and then the hips. Bring both knees to your chest. You can give yourself a hug. This is a, allowing you to reset the spine. Place your feet on the ground, your arms open wide. And this time, we'll switch sides. Lift your hips like a bridge. They move to the left, and your knees come down to the right. Again, if you notice your left shoulder lift off the ground, 
adjust yourself. Make sure that both shoulder blades, so the back side of the body, are firmly planted. And turn your head to the left. Again, with your eyes closed, you can imagine with every inhale, it's almost like your spine gets a little bit longer, you're stretching a little bit longer, and your exhale allows you to deepen. We'll do one last breath. Bring your head back through center. You can bring your knees and your hips back through center. Pull both knees to your chest and again give yourself a squeeze. Maybe this time you lift your head and your shoulders off the mat and roll from side to side. Again, offering a little massage on the back of the body. And then from here, you can hold on behind your knees. So you're holding on to your thighs and start to rock into a seated position. And once you get into a seat, you're going to stay seated. We'll work our way into the Navasana pose. So you slowly walk your feet towards you. You're on the toes and you're walking the feet very, very slowly until eventually they lift off the ground. And then from here, you want to try avoiding rounding the spine. So instead, think of lifting the chest and pulling the shoulders along the back body. Navel draws into the spine. You can either stay here or you can bring your legs into a 45 degree angle, either pointing or flexing the toes. I'm pointed today. Think of your inner thighs squeezing together. If you're holding a block there, you're squeezing that block or imagining a block there. You can release the arms one at a time, palms facing to the sky. So we'll do three top boats as you inhale, you're stretching the legs forward, lean your upper body back, and on the exhale, draw the knees to chest. Again, inhale, slowly bring it back. And on the exhale, Navasana. One more, inhale, slowly lower back, keep your navel to spine. Exhale, Knees to chest, you can place your feet on the mat, butterfly poles, knees open wide, soles of the feet together. Whether your heels are really, really close to you or if your feet are a little farther away, it just depends on what feels better for you. If you're holding your ankles, lift the chest, pull the shoulders back again, so you're keeping the spine nice and long. As I mentioned, we'll be working a little bit with uh, back bending heart opening today, two sides of the same coin. To open the heart, we have to bend back. So you want to keep this sensation of throwing the shoulders along the back side of the body down, keeping the chest extending forward. And then you can help the knees together. Bring yourself into a tabletop position. <clears throat> now, in your tabletop, you can spread the fingers nice and wide. Take up as much surface area with the palms as you can. Then slowly working through the cat cows. You're inhaling to lift the tail, drop the belly, lift the chest up. And the exhale, you round the spine. Push your shoulder blades to the sky. Again, inhale, lift, arc the spine. And as you exhale, you're rounding the spine. You can do a few more like this in your own rhythm. And when you're ready, put it back into a tabletop neutral position again. Your fingers are spread wide, your middle fingers are pointing straight forward. Tuck the toes and then lift into a downward dog. As you push your hips to the sky, you can start to pedal the heels down one at a time, waking up through the backs of the legs, especially if this is your first down dog of the morning. I'm going to take a few moments to really ease into this shape. Press both heels to the ground. Take a nice big stretch through the backs of the legs, even up into the glutes, possibly the low back. 
from here, look forward, bring yourself into a plank position. And then hold for a breath here. So first plank, you're pushing your heels to the back wall, chest forward, belly in. Keep pushing into the palms of the hands so that your shoulder blades lift to the sky. And as you inhale again, lift into a downward facing dog. It's high, ground through the heels. As you're pushing down into your thumbs and your index fingers, you want to feel that inner edge of the arm light up all the way into the shoulders. Your shoulders are nice and strong. Again, feeling that space between the shoulder blades as you very, very softly externally rotate your shoulders. So really connecting with the back of the body as you look forward, bring yourself into plank, inhale. Hold for the exhale. Again, breathe in, hold the plank. Shoulder blades to the sky, hold for the exhale. Lift into a down dog, inhale up this high, ground through heels. So starting to really cultivate some strength in the shoulders here. Inhale, lift both heels. Bend the knees, look forward, and step to the top of your mat. Uttanasana, forward fold. Your feet are at hip width distance. You can take your halfway lift fingertips to the ground or your hands to shins. Lengthen the spine, chest forward, belly in, shoulders back. And then fold for ragdoll position with your elbows. Relax your head. Your knees can have a slight bend. Or you can start to straighten the legs, pushing your inner thighs toward the back wall. Really relax the head, relax your neck, relax your shoulders. Maybe you even rock from side to side. Now release your arms, roll to standing. So vertebrae by vertebrae, you're stacking the spine. And then once you're in a standing position, bring your shoulders to your ears, roll them back, and then down. Inhale, bring your arms up and your the top the palms together, interlace the fingers, and take a stretch to the sky. On the exhale, stretch to the right. So you're taking a nice side bend here. Inhale, back to center. And exhale to the left. Do one more each side. Inhale to center. Exhale to the right. Really feeling the ribs open, feeling the whole side body open. Inhale, back to the center. Exhale to the left. Inhale to center. And then bring the hands behind your back. Interlace your fingers. Lift the chest. And on the exhale, bend your knees, fold forward. Relax your head. Relax your neck. Let the arms lift away from your back body. And your knees can absolutely be bent. Otherwise, you're welcome to straighten the legs. You know, there's always options. There are always modifications here. So honor your body. Love my guidance. Please always. Release the arms. Take your halfway lift. Inhale, lengthen the spine, belly in, chest forward, shoulders back. And then step back with your left leg. From here, you can lower the knee. Inhale, bring the arms up. Hold the left wrist. And another side stretch to the right. So you're really feeling not only the ribs move to the left, you're feeling the hips push to the left as you stretch your arms to the right. And really get that left side of the body open. Back to center, inhale, and then release the hands down to the sides of your body. So from here, what you're going to do is ease out of the left. So now your legs are more of a square angle. So rather than leaning super far forward into a lunge, bring yourself back a little bit. You want to feel your tailbone push down to the ground as you lift the navel. So you're aligning yourself better. Bring the arms up, and the right arm comes back. Left arm comes forward to a twist. Now this might already feel like a nice big stretch in the chest here. That's okay. You can roll with it. If you'd like to take it a little farther, you can always bend that back arm and bring it towards the left hip. So this is going to offer leverage so that you can turn a little bit deeper. 
looking towards the back wall as much as possible. And breathing. Inhale, bring both arms to the sky. And then place the hands down. Spring your front foot for, uh, for your, my apologies, almost forgot the word, your half split. So you're moving your hips back. Straighten the front leg and come onto the heel of your front leg. And you can keep your arms stretched forward like I am here. Or you can walk your fingers just a little closer towards you. The main objective is you're flexing your right foot and drawing the right hip back. So you're really getting that opposing movement happening in the back side of your leg. Draw back through the hip, kick through the heel. Couple more breaths. You find that movement here, like a pulsing sensation as you exhale, you're folding and inhale lifting. And sometimes really supports this type of stretch. Come back into your lunge position. Tuck the back toe, lift the back knee, step forward, Uttanasana, forward fold. Halfway lift, lengthen your spine. And on your exhale, fold forward. And the knees and rise, bring the arms up, palms together, little back bend. And on the exhale, bring your hands to heart. From here, bring your left knee to your chest. As you pull the left knee in, you want to feel the hips aligned. So what this might look like is as you draw that left knee up, sometimes the left hip likes to lift. You actually want to feel the left hip draw just a little bit here so that you're nice and square through the hips. You want to release your ankle and your toes and your back to build up. And then from here, you're opening into your tree pose. You place that left foot just below or above the right knee. And always avoid placing pressure on the right knee. You don't want to cause any damage to the joint. You can bring your palms together in front of the heart. And then the arms come up overhead. You let the branches of your tree open. Feel the shoulders soften along the back side of the heart. You bring the arms behind your back. You can even hold on to the forearms or your elbows, or if you're looking for your reverse prayer, you can bring the palms together, fingers pointing up, and again the shoulders roll back and down. Bring the arms overhead, nice big stretch. Palms together, float your hands to heart. You're bringing the left knee through center now. So you're still balancing. Kick that left leg forward, and then tip your whole body forward as you kick the left leg back, toppling tree. Now in your toppling tree, you can float the hands to the sides of the body, palms facing down. This will bring the shoulders along the back body. So notice a theme here. Every time we pull the shoulders down the back body, the chest expands, and this is what we're looking for. Now step back into a lunge, left leg back. The hands are still at the sides of the body. And it's like you're leaning forward here. You can start to lift the back heel a little bit higher, draw the right hip back, left hip forward, and the arms extend forward. Breathe. At the same time you're holding the shape, you want to feel like the ribs are sort of compressed to your chest a little bit. Not so that you're blocking your airway, but just enough that we're starting to engage the transverse abdominis, the deep rooted stabilizers. Lower your hands, step forward, Uttanasana, forward fold. Take your halfway lift, lengthen your spine, and then fold forward, Hada Nusasana, index and middle fingers around the big toes, and then fold forward, elbows bent. Relax the back of your head, and lean a little bit more weight to your toes. Release your hands, start with halfway lift, extend the spine, right leg back this time. As you step your right leg back, lower the knee, arms in the air, hold the right wrist and take a nice big stretch to the left. So again, you're really not only pulling that right arm, so that that whole right arm, the shoulder are open here, allowing the ribs and the hips to slide to the right.
back to center, inhale, and then lower the hands down for a minute. So as you did on the other side, you're bringing yourself out of the deep lunge so that you've got a nice square position here, not only in the hips, but also to that front and back knee. Tuck the tail slightly, draw your navel to spine. Inhale, the arms come up. This time, left arm back, right arm forward. Now, this might be a very different experience on this side. It might feel a little more challenging, maybe more opening. Again, you can bring that left arm behind the back. And you're looking towards the back wall as much as possible. Bring the arms overhead. And on your exhale, bring the fingertips to the floor. Come into a half split. The hips move back, you're on the heel of the front foot. Your arms are either stretched forward or you've walked them a little closer to you. That depends on what feels best for you. And as you pull your left hip back, flex the uh, left front of the pushing the heel forward, drawing the hip back on the same leg. And again, if you like that pulsing, pulse very gently here. Holding on the exhale. Things finally in. Bring yourself into your lunge position. Tuck your back toe. Lift the back knee. Step forward. Vinasana, forward fold. Halfway lift. Extend your spine. This time bring your hands to your waist. Belly in. Chest forward. And then rise to standing. Right knee to chest. Pull it in. Again, feel that right hip lower just a little bit as you stand on one leg. You can release the right toes, release the right ankle. Tree pose. So you're opening the right knee and you're placing the foot at the same height that you did on the other side. Always avoiding the knee joint. Again, whatever arm variation aligns with you this morning, that might be palms together in front of the heart. That might be arms up or arms open. Or it may be reverse prayer or a variation of it while you move your elbows or forearms. And a deep breath. I'll bring the arms overhead, palms together, and then hands to heart. So continue to balance as you bring the right knee through center. Start by kicking forward, and then you tip the whole body forward, your right leg is straight. So now we're in toppling tree pose. And bring the hands to float to the sides of the body, palms facing down, the heart lifted. And then a deep breath here is your balance. And then step back into your lunge position. Continue to lean forward. On facing down, lift the back heel. Really start to challenge yourself as you find more strength in that front glute, the hamstring in the back leg, reach the arms forward. Feel that very, very gentle compression through the ribs as you start to uh, use the transverse step on this. So those are the ones that keep us upright and walking with our stabilizers on the abs. Fingertips to the ground, step forward, Uddhanasana, forward fold. Halfway lift, lengthen your spine. Padangustasana, again, index the middle fingers around the big toe, or if you'd like, you can slide your palms underneath Padangustasana. You're stepping on the palms as you lean a little bit more weight forward. Relax your head. Soften the upper body as much as possible. You want to feel the spine decompressing. Release, take your halfway lift, extend the spine, and from here you can step or hop back into your plank position. From your plank, fingers are spread wide, push your heels to the back, belly in, shoulders strong, and then lower all the way to your belly. Baby cobra, lift the chest, and on your exhale, you can lower back down. Coming into a twisty belly shoulder stretch. So your right arm 
is in a T-shaped position, palm facing down. Your left fingertips are on the floor beside you, the elbow points up. And then from here, bend your left leg. You're rolling to the right. And you can place your left foot on the ground and lower your head. And you want to feel that nice big stretch in the right shoulder. And you're also getting a slight twist in the spine, so you might feel like your hip opens here. If you want a deeper stretch, first come out of this pose, and then you're going to bring your right arm into a cactus shape. And it would be the same idea, and the left leg, and then roll to the right. Slowly bring it back to your belly. Let's take baby cobra. Slide your hands down beside the ribs. Your fingers are spread wide. Start to lift the chest. And try to avoid looking up here. So if you feel the back of your neck crunching, up the chin very slightly. So the back of your neck is long. You're lifting the chest. A slowly lower back down. Let's do this again. Inhale, lift the chest. This time lift your hands off the ground. So you're not even using the hands to support you. You're using the muscles along the back body. Exhale, lower back down. Let's do one more. Inhale, lift your chest. Again, chin tuck slightly, lift your hands. And this time, point the toes and lift your feet. So now you're using your glutes to lift the legs. You're using the whole back side of the body. And then lower back down. Let's do the other side. Your left arm is in a T or a cactus shaped position. Right fingertips to the ground beside you, elbow pointing up. And as you bend the right leg, now you roll to the left. You can lower your head and place your right foot on the ground. If it allows you to go deeper into this position, you can close your eyes. One more breath. Slowly bring it back to your belly. Sphinx pose. So now your palms are on the ground. <clears throat> and so are your forearms. Now, before we go any farther, take a look at your elbows. And if you notice that they're pretty wide, wider than your shoulders, then you need to bring the elbows in slightly. And for most of us, especially women, we tend to overestimate how large the shoulders are. So draw the elbows a little closer together. Make sure they're at the same distance apart as your shoulders. And then from here, rather than lifting the chest, you're going to imagine that you're sliding the arms back towards you and pulling yourself forward slightly. So it's like the skin sort of moves back, the bone stays where it is. Then you're lifting the chest. Shoulders strong. Again, tuck the chin slightly. So if you feel like there is an uncomfortable pressure or compression on the low back, please come down, come out of this pose, and that's not necessary today. And if you're here and you're feeling good, then please continue to stay. If you are somebody who was having pressure in the low back and you ease off, then play a little bit more with lengthening the spine rather than blocking the spine, if that makes sense. So the longer you become, the more you reach forward and lengthen the spine, the deeper into your back and be able to flow. Now you can either stay here, or if you'd like, come into your seal. So keep the palms grounded and start to lift the elbows. And again, we're not dipping into the shoulders. Your shoulders are nice and strong. The corners of the chest are always lifting. You're in your steel, and you want to go even a little bit farther. You can walk the hands a little bit closer in towards you. And no pinching, no uncomfortable pressure or compression should be happening. And if that's the case, please ease out. You never want pain in this practice. Let's do one more breath here.
Then come down to your elbows. From your elbows, come down all the way to your chest. You can stack your palms and bring one cheek down to the ground, either cheek. Let the feet fall open wide. So you're relaxing the legs. And notice, as you let the heels fall open, this is going to give a very gentle release in the low back. As you internally rotate the thighs, the low back releases. We'll switch directions of your head, so turn the other cheek. Lift your head, slide your hands down beside the wrist. Start with baby cobra. So lift the chest, chin touch, elbows pointing to the back wall, and then lower back down. Slide your hands a little bit lower beside the low ribs. And this time as you start to lift the chest, you're lifting and straightening the arms. Your knees lift off the ground, upward facing dog, you're up very gently, and then tuck the toes, downward facing dog. Adhamukha, Svanasana, fingers spread wide, shoulder blades moving away from one another. Lift the hips a little higher, ground through the heels. As you inhale, lift your right leg, you can stack your hips, so right hip over the left. You can either point the toe and keep that right leg straight, or you can bend your right knee. You want to really feel the hips opening here and expanding. Stretch your right leg back, and on the exhale, knees, nose, round the shoulders, tuck your chin. Take back through the inhale. Exhale, knee to right elbow, stay inside. Inhale, kick back. Exhale, across the body, knee to left elbow. Inhale, kick back, and stepping into warrior one. Lower the back heel, bring the arms up. And from here on the exhale, practice the elbows. So as soon as the elbows come into this position, you want to feel the muscles in the upper back, so the shoulders are squeezing together. Inhale, reach up. And again, exhale, use the back muscles to squeeze the elbows together, the shoulders together. Inhale, reach up. Again, exhale, practice. This time, bring the hands behind the back. Interlace the fingers, lift your chest, and then fold forward, humble warrior. Right shoulder to the right side, lift the hands and gaze from your back. Relax your head, pushing through the outer edge of your back with your foot, and lunging nice and low into the front leg. And from here, release the hands, bring your arms back overhead, warrior one. And we're coming into warrior two. So now that back foot is parallel to the back of the mat. You're staying in a nice strong lunge. The arms are extended. Looking over top of the right fingers, slide your body back for example, warrior. Lower the left hand, you can reach the right arm to the sky. And on the exhale, bring it back into warrior two. Straighten the front leg, trikonasana, triangle pose. Slide forward. And this time you can lower that right hand. You either have the right hand on your thigh, on your shin, or hovering just above the ground. Try to avoid putting all of your weight in the right hand. So you're not sinking to the ground, you're actually lifting to the sky. You can look towards the ceiling or towards the wall in front of you. Have a deep breath. Come back up. And from here, release the hands. So we're setting up in pyramid pose. So you can either shorten the stance a little bit, or if you want to stay in a really wide pyramid pose, you can do that as well. And as you shorten the stance, you want to place your hands on your waist and pull the right hip back so that the hips are square. Now from here, start to bring yourself forward. You're keeping the chest lifted, shoulders drawn back. You might already feel Nice big stretch through that front leg, through the glute, possibly into the low back, and this is good. You can either stay here with your hands on your waist. Another option is to take your reverse prayer. So hands behind the back, 
palms together. And you're challenged with keeping the chest lifted and the belly in, even with your prayer pose. If you can fold a little more deeply, please know that you're welcome to do so. Breath. Release your hands. Frame the front foot, standing split. So bend the front knee. Lift your left leg in the air. Standing split position. Fingertips are on the ground. And keep lifting that left heel a little bit higher. A little bit higher. And then bring your knee to nose. Lower the left foot. Take your halfway lift, extend the spine, and then you exhale, forward fold. Rise, standing, arms up, arms together, little back bend. Exhale, hands apart. Take your hands up to your low back. The heel of the hand is on your low back. Rather than pushing forward, you actually want to imagine that you're pushing down towards the ground. So it's like you're lengthening the low back. Lift the chest. Start to make your way into the little back bend here. So if this is maximum for you, you're just sort of looking up, that's okay. So you want to honor yourself, honor your body, love my guidance. And if you feel you can come into a deeper back bend, then please, by all means, start to lift a little bit higher. A little bit deeper, and a little bit deeper. Back to center. Release your hands. Rise. Inhale, bring the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Devasana. Halfway lift, extend the spine. Step your left leg back. So left leg back, twist and lunge. Your left hand is on the ground and right arm to the sky. Set up in our Arda Vashi Stasana, so modified side plank. Come to the outer edge of the back foot, and you're using your front leg, your right leg, like the support. As you inhale, reach the right arm forward, lift your hips, and on the exhale, lower the hips, reach that arm back. Again, the inhale, reach forward, lift the hips, nice big stretch. Exhale, bring it back. One more. Inhale. This time we'll lower the hand and then kick the right leg in the air, three legged dog. Look forward, bring yourself into a three legged plank, or you can lower that right foot. And then Chaturanga. Up dog or cobra. And on the exhale, back into your down dog. Three. This time, lift your left leg, stack your hip, so left hip above the right hip, you can either point the toe or bend the knee. Remember to breathe. Stretch the left leg, and on the exhale, knee to nose. Kick back. Exhale, knee to left elbow, same side. Inhale, kick back across the body into the left elbow. Inhale, kick back. Warrior one, step all the way forward, lower the back heel, bring your arms up. So from here, cactus the elbows, squeeze the tips of the shoulder blades. Inhale, reach up. And exhale. One more. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, cactus. And bring the arms behind your back. Interlace the fingers, lift the chest. On the warrior, fold forward. Left shoulder to the left inner thigh. Lift the arms away from your back body. Steady breath.
Warrior two, rise. And then open into your warrior two. You're pushing through the outer edge of the back foot. You're in a nice strong lunge. You can slide your body back, lower the right arm, and lift to the full warrior. On the exhale, warrior two. Straighten the front leg. Trikonasana, slide forward. And this time you lower the left hand. Right arm to the sky. And you're either looking straight forward or to the ceiling. And please notice as the head is hanging, lift the head so that it's aligned with the neck and spine. You want to feel like the neck muscles are actually getting strength. Back up. We're setting up in a pyramid pose. You can lower the hands. Again, shorten the stance. Bring your hands to your waist and square the hips. So this time, right hip forward, left hip back. Again, you can either keep the hands on your waist or you can start straight from your reverse prayer. If you're in reverse prayer and the shoulders are rolling forward, the hands will actually touch together most likely. And so when you're in reverse prayer, you actually want the shoulders. To roll back, chest is almost cocked up a little bit, and then you can lean forward. It's fine, nice and long. Then you can flow a little deeper into this pyramid pose. Please feel free for the last two breaths. Lower your hands, frame the front foot, standing split, right leg in the air. Now lift that right heel a little bit higher, and on the exhale, knee to nose, and lower the right foot. Halfway lift, lengthen your spine. Exhale, forward fold. The knees and rise, bring the arms up to the next big stretch. This time, keep your arms overhead. Now we're coming back into that little back bend. So with the arms extended up, again, rather than starting with the, this sort of puffed forward in the chest and ribs sort of position, you actually want to start in a nice aligned position. So you imagine you're tucking the tail, lifting the navel, and the ribs draw in. Start from here, and then start to lift taller, reach a little bit higher. And the higher you reach, the deeper you flow into a back bend. Come back to center and lower the hands down. Inhale, rise, bring the arms up. Exhale, forward fold, Utanasana. Halfway lift, lengthen your spine. Right leg back, twisted lunge. Right hand to the ground, left arm to the sky. Breathe. Vashisasana, so the modified side plank. Outer edge of the right foot, use the left leg like support. Reach forward on the inhale, and on the exhale, lower down. Let's do another one. Inhale, reach forward. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, reach forward. Place your left hand on the ground, and then three-legged dog, left leg in the air. Look forward, three-legged plank, or you can lower the left foot. As you exhale, flow, chaturanga, up dog or cobra, and then into your downward dog. Up to your knees. And then from here, you're turning the hips high. So we're setting up in our uh, heart muscle pose, anahatasana. So the hips stay high and walk your hands forward. You can lower your forehead down. If you're here and this feels like a good stretch in the shoulders, please stay. The next option is to place your elbows on the mat, palms together, and then bend the elbows. So you're bringing the thumbs 
to your mid back. Release your arms, and then come back into your tabletop position. <laughs> We're going to get set up the pigeon pose. So you're going to tuck the toes and lift into a downward facing dog. Lift your right leg and bring your right knee to the right wrist, so stay inside. Now, as you lower that front knee, you're actually going to not keep the hips this high. You want to send the left leg back. So you're getting as long as possible. From here, pull the right hip back, left hip forward, so that you're not leaning over to the right side. And then lift the chest. So this is proud pigeon. Draw the right hip back, left hip forward, heart lifts, shoulders draw back. Now, if you'd like, there's a few options. Number one is to stay here. Fingertips on the ground, chest lifted. Option two is to recline forward. With the rest. And option three, the mermaid pose, or king pigeon. So you're working towards bending the back leg. You would reach one arm back at least. And you can play around with different variations here. So this might be where you stay. And really start to notice as you reach that left arm back and you're holding the foot, can you feel the shoulder open? Can you feel the chest open? Is that enough? Alternatively, come a little bit deeper. Make your way into a different style of back. Very slowly release from your mermaid pose if that's where you are. And if you're reclined, you're going to lift up back into your proud pigeon. So from here, you're stepping your right foot to the outside of the right hand. So both hands are on the mat. Tuck the back toe, lift the back knee, right foot to the outside of the right hand. So now we're in somewhat of a lizard pose. Again, like the offer variations, you can stay here. Some of you might like to come down to your forearms. And some of you might like to lower the back leg. And you can stay up on your fingertips, whatever feels best for you today. And wherever you choose to land, think of pulling the heart forward. So keep that theme of chest forward, shoulders back. And you can actually do that even if you're on your forearms. Still chest forward, shoulders back, kind of like a sphinx pose. Come up to your hands. <clears throat> you're going to step back into a down dog. Lift the back knee, right leg back. You can take a couple of breaths, walk it out. If you want to flow, this is a great time to flow. You can come forward into your chaturanga. Up dog or cobra. And back into a down dog. Lift your left leg. Pigeon pose, left knee to left wrist. And again, you want to send the right leg as far back as possible. Pull the right hip forward, left hip back, and this could be where you stay, top pigeon. If you want to recline, again, please recline. If you want to play around with your mermaid or cheek pigeon, this is a great time to do that as well. And know that wherever you are is perfect. There's no place that you have to try to go. There's nothing to accomplish here. It's simply about exploring your body and exploring different shapes in your body, finding your own edge, and maybe discovering a new position, a new edge.
release. You're in your mermaid pose. Come back. You're reclined into your crowd pigeon. And again, it's left foot to the outside of the left hand. So start by lifting the back knee. And then step your left foot to the outside of the left hand. So you're pigeon pouring your uh, lizard pose. <clears throat> Notice you're not rounding the spine here and looking down. You're actually keeping the chest lifted. <clears throat> From your forearms, come back to your hands. Step back into your down dog. If you want one final flow, please slow. And if you're ready to come down, you can come down to your knees, child's pose, knees wide, toes together. And then stretch forward as you push the hips back. So your arms extend forward, your forehead resting on the ground, on your mat. You can rock your forehead from side to side. Massaging the brow bone, and you're also waking up this energetic center called Ajna, the third eye. Your intuition, your insight. From here, we're coming down to our backs, and so however you get there today, if you want to take a moment, Cat cow flow, or if you want to move around or a different way, give you a few moments to make your way. However, you need to get there. And then once you're eventually lying down on your back, you start by crossing your right ankle over the left knee. It's almost like we're coming into a figure four, but you're actually going to keep the left foot on the ground. So you cross the right ankle over the left knee, and you're simply going to let both legs fall to the left. Stay in this position. So now your right foot is on the ground, and so is the outer edge of the foot. This could be a really nice stretch for you already, in which case, stay there. Another option could be taking your left hand, pushing your right thigh forward, so that you're creating a little bit more space in that hip flexor area. Bring the right arm open into a T shape and turn your head to the right. You're going to head back through center. Bring your legs back through center. You can uncross. You want to walk your heels nice and close towards you. We'll take a bridge close to the other side. So your heels are as close to you as possible. Maybe you can touch them with your hands. Maybe not quite. So it's okay if not. Your feet are hip width distance, so they're not touching together. They're a little farther apart from them. Inhale, squeeze the glutes, lift your hips. Keep the glutes engaged so you're actually not using the low back to lift your glute muscles. You're also going to be pushing into the heels, start to feel your low quadriceps on the front of the thighs, activate. And then lower down nice and slowly. Cross your left ankle over the right knee. As you do on the other side, just to let the knees and legs rather fall to the right. From here, Bring your left arm into a T-shape. You want it to take that right hand and add a little bit of an extra support or stretch. Push your left thigh towards the front of the room. And then turn your head to the right leg. So gently rock to the side. Even here, releasing the neck, creating more deep pressure.
with your head back through center and bring the knees back through center. Uncross the legs again, bridge pose. And one more time, you're engaging the glutes. So you use the muscles in your glutes to lift the hips. Don't use the low back. If you ever feel like you're having low back pain, start to use the glute muscles. They're these massive muscles, and they can really support you so much as you're moving. Inner thighs are active. Imagine holding the block between the thighs. Lift the chest a little bit higher. Remember to breathe. And then lower back down nice and slowly. Hold both knees to your chest. Give yourself a hug. Maybe rock from side to side. Go back a little massage. And sitting up in our flame pose. Shavasana. Resting pose. You can take up as much space as you'd like in your body. If you feel that you'd like support in your low back, you're going to take a constructive rest to the hip. Knees together, feet wide. If you prefer a more traditional shavasana, then please stretch your legs. Take up again as much space as you like. And your only objective here is to soften. Objective is to rest here. Take a scan, a mental scan through your body. Feeling every muscle from the toes of the legs to your thighs, your hips, your glutes, everything softens and relaxes. Standing up with your belly. Low back, ribs, chest, to the shoulders and your arms, they all become a little more relaxed. Scanning through your throat, neck, your jaw, your teeth. Nose, eyelids, the brow bone, the whole upper body, and your head relaxes. For those of you who have the time to stay through this morning, please know that you are welcome to stay as long as you need. And when you are eventually ready to move, just take the time slowly. Enjoy the sunshine, remember to stay hydrated. Namaste.